Next, I have the pleasure to invite the second speaker, who really needs hardly any introduction to Sri Lankan audience. I think his name is now almost a household word. <laughs> but uh, very briefly, he is a very competent doctor, a consultant pediatric neurologist at the, the Lady Bay Hospital. He is also the academic head of the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Rajarata. His third hat is the president of the Government Medical Officers Association, one of the largest and certainly one of the most powerful trade unions uh, our country has ever witnessed. Uh, uh, to Dr. Padania's credit, he has taken the remit of the trade union beyond the narrow limits of looking after the interest of his members. He, he has been uh, uh, advocacy you know, for issues of public health concern and uh, there are several examples where he has played a leading role. Uh, so I think without further ado, I would ask uh, uh, Dr. Arirudh Padaniya to speak to us uh, on, on, on a topic which will relate to what I have talked about, which is uh, the, the role of, uh, the potential role for the Sri Lankan health sector in the knowledge economy. Thank you, sir, and it's a privilege to uh, talk in, in, uh, in the chair. And I would like to thank the organizers, especially uh, Dr. Marco Lolua, for inviting me. I think uh, I'm also struggling to be academic head there in the Rajarata, and the knowledge, skills, and attitude training of uh, Sri Lankan medical graduates who are passing out uh, because the impression is there is some deterioration, so how to uh, improve it is uh, a key issue we all will have to fight uh, in the coming years because in the international context the expectations of the enhancing attitude is the order of the day. Anyway, going out of uh, that topic, uh, today I am going to talk to you on some kind of innovative ideas uh, basically in your inauguration session which was uh, basically highlighted how we are going to integrate ourselves into our health sector, into the overall system because we all will have to understand the policies and other kind of innovations how we are going to fit in with your developments and it was very impressive in the morning uh, the two talks by the vice chancellor and the uh, minister himself uh, we'd like to have a politician like that who basically spoke from mdgs this millennium development goes down to position him in the correctly uh, the KDU, where you are positioning in the global context and how we are going to uh, visualize you all from making the government policy of uh, making the knowledge hub and various hubs they are planning as the government policy. So going towards this, I am going to take a brief this uh, presentation to you with regard to this booklet which I published in 2008. I have some copies if you want to share. Uh, basically, where uh, I am heading. So. What is knowledge economy? Actually, we got to know uh, this word from Professor Dr. P. B. Jayasundara. He's, I respect him a lot. And he basically, and then when we studied what is this knowledge economy all about is because we are basically technically qualifying ourselves. I am a clinician, actually. I am a neurologist. So my basic aim is to look after the neurology. But in the global context or in the national context, where we are going to position ourselves and what will be our future will have to be discussed in this uh, integrated system where we can't now even the WHO says health in all policies so therefore we are we can't work in isolation that's a must that's why sir very clearly highlighted the value of our inputs into the other sectors including nutrition not only health even beyond that in agriculture and other areas which we have taken that into that expansion with that vision in mind so use of knowledge to generate tangible and intangible values so with the use of economy, everybody would think that uh, the economy is to generate money. But here, the definition it says, according to Wikipedia, it's the generation or generate tangible and intangible values. And one of them will be generating revenue or you call money. So going towards this topic, uh, basically, people talk about the artificial intelligence, machines and other things. But at the same time, as you all were listening in the morning, the service sector, how we can deliver the service sector and how we can now, even physiotherapists and all these elite health sciences and how we can provide our services rather than machines. So this is where we are heading. 
So just to talk to you about what is this all knowledge economy and where it is positioning at the moment is, initially if you talk about the evolution of the knowledge economy, I would like to go through the four phases of so-called economic restructuring. I am not an economist, I am, this is certain things I gather from um, various sources. They talk about four phases. First of all, the agricultural economy, or you call it the agrarian sector, which was the focus uh, of economy at a time. And then you, everyone knows about the so-called industrial revolution, where we all talk about economy through the industries. <coughs> and then the post-industrial economy basically looked after the service sector and basically it was highlighted the potential of earning is basically lied with this service orientation. Even the World Bank, they don't give money for industries, they always give for capacity building and for knowledge increase. So now we have come to the fourth phase, that is the knowledge economy, which is basically leading and considered as the highest potential of revenue generation plus the value generation in this context. So therefore, now that is the era. Unfortunately, when I talk about knowledge economy, some people even some colleagues are not even aware of this fact and it is very dangerous for us to uh, look forward in this uh, attractive context post for uh, era of Sri Lanka. <coughs> so people talk various words using human capital and these words. Anyway, sorry. So knowledge economy is basically today amalgamated or merging with the innovations innovation from various angles. Innovation is always not discoveries with machines and other things. Innovation, policy innovations, strategy innovations, all these three innovations are part and parcel of this knowledge economy. So why knowledge economy is so important is that is the most highest potential revenue generation. For instance, how Dr. P.B. Jayasundar is looking at us from a doctor's point of view is simply now uh, I am a doctor. Now UGC chairman was available in the morning today. If you ask her statistics, the economical commitment on production of a Sri Lankan doctor is, uh, according to 2005 figures, it was 1.2 million. To produce a nurse in Sri Lanka cost about 1.8 million. So by producing 1.2 million, if Sri Lanka can employ me in Middle East, the revenue generation they can generate is, if you uh, sort of invest on 1.2 million on another industry versus what they can generate with least amount of uh, kind of uh, all these red tapes and all these things is enormous. So that is why he always value us as an economic tool in this context. So and then the updating knowledge and knowledge sharing, this is much more valued because now people talk about globalization. So globalization doesn't mean anything unless you value it from that point. So what is being uh, generated in other countries will have to be shared. So that will be that and we are going into the global market that is from economic perspective. And we position ourselves correctly in the so-called global positioning and our good reputation. Today we are exporting mostly the uh, unskilled laborers so the reputation is going to be valued. So an international positioning, especially uh, INGOs and other people where we can position ourselves. Then promotion of mutual relationships. With all these things in mind, and it is an uh, investment for the free education. Free education in Sri Lanka going for the foreigners here, I am telling, going up to the education, university levels is free. It's unusual. And it is a major solution for this so-called unemployment. There shouldn't be unemployment if you have skills and various other aspects also will be looked like health, tourism and other things. So current ranking of knowledge economy index, if you go to the World Bank sites, we are positioned in 82nd position, which I am not that convinced, but uh, that is how they uh, position ourselves. And some countries are ahead of us, even in the region. This is available in the website, if you go to, if you uh, Google knowledge economy index you will get this.